Hello again, and happy and blessed New Year 2021 from Metro Manila, the Philippines, Southeastern Asia. Now the new year has begun everywhere on the face of the earth. The, the old year, which just ended uh, at midnight yesterday, 2020 was one of the most difficult years in the modern human history. Not the least because of the worldwide pandemic, COVID-19, which has afflicted people to a greater or lesser degree on all the six inhabited continents of the world, although not, by no means everywhere equally much. Thankfully, one of the six continents has been largely spared, especially from deaths, and that is Oceania. And only in one Oceanian country, which ironically <clears throat> is also by far the most populous country, there are tens of thousands of people who have caught the virus, and over 900 have died, and that is Australia. While already the neighboring New Zealand has been much more successful, there are over 2,000 cases of COVID, and as far as I can remember, only 25 deaths. And then, for example, in the Philippines' southeastern neighbor, Palau, which is classified as an Oceanian country, there are probably still no known cases among its human inhabitants of COVID-19 and no known deaths. According to the official, and note my emphasis on this adjective, official, figures available, for example, on the uh, worldometers.info website, the continent of Africa has been fairly successful in fighting against COVID, although there are caveats. Africa has such a large number of uh, communities, especially in its countryside, in many, if not most of its countries, particularly in Western and Eastern Africa, which are difficult to reach, that uh, those COVID-19 figures have to be treated with quite a big grain of salt. In other words, quite a big degree of caution. <clears throat> Latin America has seen in the last months the most rapid official rates of increase uh, in both the number of human cases and in the number of human deaths. Europe is somewhere in between. Uh, in many European countries, as the year 2020 was drawing to its close, there was a new surge, probably a new wave of COVID-19, which then made especially the number of new cases increase, and sadly also the number of deaths. Russia, which is the world's largest country in territory and also the world's largest transcontinental country, its western regions are located in Eastern Europe, its eastern regions are located in Central, Northern and Eastern Asia, introduced a probably not sufficiently effective COVID-19 vaccine back in August 2020, even though there were experts who cautioned uh, the enthusiasts, including apparently the authoritarian Russian President Vladimir Putin, that the vaccine had not been fully tested. Back then, there were over 900,000 COVID-19 cases among Russia's human inhabitants, according to the worldometers.info website. Now there are over 2 million of them. <clears throat> Some 84 million humans have been infected with the virus. Over 59 million have recovered, while uh, sadly over 1.8 million have died. The United States is in a class of its own and in a truly negative sense with over 20 million human cases. The number two country in the world, India, has over 10 million human cases. Thankfully, there are already several vaccines that are available and many more will become available uh, this new year 2021. So we could expect that at the very latest by the fourth quarter of this year, so between October and <clears throat> December, 2021, hopefully already in the first, second or third quarters of the year, um, the numbers or at least the rates of increase of 
the new human <clears throat> COVID-19 cases and deaths will start to come down everywhere in the world. And of course, we keep hoping and praying those of us who believe in God and who believe in the power of prayer like the undersigned does, that God in his mercy will intervene, that especially during the second half of 2021, that is between <clears throat> July and December, there will be a marked decrease, especially in the relative numbers of new COVID-19 cases and deaths throughout the world. Of course, 2020 has not been only about this battle against COVID-19. Uh, there has been a struggle for democracy. Various African countries have held elections, some of which probably have been rigged, some others of which have been honest. Europe has had a number of elections. Asia has had some, um, and maybe also Latin America. And of course, the United States, the world's largest Western democracy held presidential, congressional, state, and local elections in November 2020. Sadly, although both the popular votes, including the numerous recounts and the electoral colleges votes that were cast on December the 14th, 2020, have shown without the slightest reasonable shadow of doubt that he lost the elections Donald Trump still keeps uh, spreading the false myth that he won the elections. And some of his diehard allies are willing to disrupt the congressional vote count uh, of the electoral votes or certification rather on January the 6th, 2021. At most they can delay the certification by maybe up to one or two days, but they know themselves that they cannot defy the will of the people, because enough Republicans in both houses of Congress have already acknowledged, whether willingly or reluctantly, Joe Biden as the U.S. president-elect and Kamala Harris as the U.S. vice president-elect. So they can, uh, so the diehard uh, pro-Trump Republicans or those who at heart don't believe in Trump's lies, but want to please him and want to <clears throat> be spared from diehard Trumpists' primary challenges in 2022 and potentially in 2024, and then also want to position themselves as potential Republican presidential hopefuls in 2024 should Trump not run again. They nevertheless are willing to please Trump's wounded ego and vote against the duly certified election results, but they will not prevail. Then the Black Lives Movement that actually began some or several years ago following a string of <clears throat> incidents where as a result of undue violence used by usually white American police officers, several uh, young African American boys and men were killed. The Black Lives Matter movement took off especially after the videoed uh, death by asphyxiation because of excessive police force <clears throat> used by a white American police officer against George Floyd. On May the 25th, 2020, local time in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the United States. But not only in the United States, but in many other countries, including my distant native land, Finland, in Northern Europe, uh, there were Black Lives Matter protests, although to a smaller degree. Because Finland also has its share of racism, most of the Finnish racists are not openly violent, but many do use, lamentably many, do use racist uh, slogans and post-racist images online, including one member, populist member, right-wing member of the Finnish parliament, who hopefully will be at least uh, slapped with a heavy fine, and given the fact that <clears throat> he has, at least on a couple of occasions, at least on a couple of other occasions, done so, <clears throat> he should, in my opinion, be given a suspended prison term for grossly abusing his freedom of speech and freedom of the mass media by openly racist or otherwise inflammatory messages and or images. 
there have been a number of environmental crises. There have been earthquakes, <clears throat> hurricanes, uh, and other storms, droughts, cases of extreme cold and extreme heat, all of which prove that despite the climate uh, changes, uh, skeptics and deniers, climate change is very much a reality. Here in the Philippines, for example, <clears throat> there were in the second half of 2020, a number of devastating, more or less devastating storms, although thank God, since we live in Metro Manila, uh, we only had one power outage that did last some or several hours. Obviously, the online lessons, I'm a teacher, <clears throat> were canceled, for example, on that day. Fortunately, one of the positive consequences of this pandemic has been an increase in the number of individuals, <clears throat> whether they have actually lost their jobs temporarily or on a more permanent or long-term basis, whether they are working but not enough, or whether even if they are working full-time, they are not earning enough, <clears throat> especially if they have underaged children or other children still at home to care for. <clears throat> the charitable organizations who, for example, distribute free meals to those who cannot afford to buy food, fortunately have abounded uh, in many countries of the world. Unfortunately, democracy has prevailed in a number of countries in the elections. <clears throat> Despite the efforts of the individuals like Donald Trump to undermine it. Sadly, there is one country in Eastern Europe, fully located in Eastern Europe, where there has been a semi-autocratic president now for over 26 years, ever since August 1994, when he first was elected. And he was uh, again re-elected in an election that probably was rigged, not like the US president, but this election definitely was rigged. And one of the opposition leader had to flee to a neighboring democracy, and she deservedly received, I think there were other activists also, the Saharov Prize praising for effort on behalf of democracy and human rights. Well, the dictator of whom I'm speaking is, is Mr. Alexander Lukashenko, or Alexander Lukashenko, <clears throat> and he is clinging to power. Contrary to President Trump, who will have to vacate office on January the 20th, 2021. He doesn't have any such requirement because he controls the political process. <clears throat> so let's now read some analyses of this year. Um, oh yes, and I forgot to have the Wikipedia page open. concerning its events. This is, by the way, now the fifth video, as I'm counting, on the past year, 2020. In Finnish, French, um, Spanish, and German, I've already videoed, but not yet in English until now, or before this broadcast. <coughs> hmm. So let's go <clears throat> to the events summary. I try not to be too long-winded in it. By January the 1st, 2020, the Australian bushfires or forest fires, which began or had begun in August 2019, <clears throat> had killed 500 million animals. I read uh, in the international mass media at least one estimate according to which a total of one billion animals were killed by the time the forest fires basically ended or officially ended in February 2020. On January the 3rd, according to some sources, the second 
2020, a U.S. drone strike drone is an unmanned airplane-like missile <clears throat> at Baghdad International Airport in Iraq killed Iranian General Qasem Soleimani and Iraqi paramilitary leader Abu Mahdi al muhandis <clears throat> hmm. Then, on January the 29th, 2020, U.S. President Donald Trump signed the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement, a looser free trade area agreement, which protects the national industries and <clears throat> environments more, and labor forces as well, uh, which replaced later in 2020, the original North American Free Trade Agreement, which entered into operation in January 1994 between those three countries. On January the 30th, the World Health Organization declared the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic or disease as a public health emergency of international concern, the sixth time that this measure has been invoked since 2009. On January the 31st, 2020, Britain formally withdrew from the European Union, thus reducing the number of European Union's member states to 27. There are several countries in southeastern Europe on the Balkan Peninsula which have applied for EU membership and which possibly will join the European Union before this decade is over. The transition period ended yesterday on December the 31st, 2020, with the last minute deal uh, on the economic um, effects of the transition between the European Union and, and Britain. On February the 5th, 2020, as expected, US President Donald Trump was acquitted by the US Senate on both counts of impeachment. 48 to 52 and 47 to 53. The only Republican senator to vote yes on both counts was former uh, Republican presidential candidate and former Massachusetts governor and current junior senator for Utah, Mitt Romney. On February the 29th, Luxembourg, a small country in Western Europe, became the first country in the world to make all public transport free to use. On March the 5th, the International Criminal Court authorized the Afghanistan war crimes inquiry to proceed, reportedly allowed for the first time for US citizens to be investigated. On March the 11th, the World Health Organization declared the COVID-19 outbreak a pandemic. On March the 12th, global stock markets crashed due to continued concerns over COVID-19 and the US travel ban on the Schengen area, the passport free zone uh, where most European Union member states belong. The Dow Jones Industrial Average went into free fall closing at uh, a loss, a net loss of over 2,300 points, the worst losses for the index since 1987. <clears throat> um. On April the 6th, the United States designated the Russian imperial movement as a terrorist organization and imposed sanctions on its leaders. It was the first white supremacist group that the United States has designated as a terrorist organization. <clears throat> on April the 18th, 44 suspected Boko Haram members, Boko Haram is an Islamist organization, terrorist organization, <clears throat> which operates mainly in Nigeria, Central Africa, which is also 
Africa's most populous country, <clears throat> were found dead apparently due to poisoning inside a prison in N'Djamena, Chad. <clears throat> On April the 26th, King Salman of Saudi Arabia issued a royal decree declaring that people will no longer be executed in Saudi Arabia for crimes they were convicted of when they were minors, in other words, either children or teenager under 18 years of age. <clears throat> On May the 6th, astronomer, astronomers announced the discovery of the first black hole located in the star system visible to the naked eye. <clears throat> <clears throat> On May the 25th, an African-American man, uh, George Floyd, who apparently had paid um, a pack for a pack of cigarettes with a forged $20 bill, was asphyxiated uh, by the holding pinning down of his throat and the placing of uh, a police officer's knee in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the United States, and protests caused by his killing broke out across hundreds of cities in the United States and around the world already on May the 26th. These were followed <coughs> by, first, by further protests and rallies on June the 6th against racism and police brutality around the world. Also on May the 26th, Costa Rica in Central America became the first country in that region to legalize same-sex marriage. And also on May the 26th, LATAM Airlines, the largest air carrier in Latin America, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. On June the 4th, Libya's government of national accord said they were in full control of the capital, Tripoli, after forces of the Libyan National Army retreated from the territory following months of intense fighting in the city. <clears throat> On June the 27th, Michel Martin, uh, the leader of the center-right Fianna Fáil party, succeeded Leo Varadkar, the leader of the centrist and progressive Fine Gael party as Taoiseach, or prime minister, meaning head of government of Ireland in a historic three-party coalition government. Let's uh, check. Prime Minister <clears throat> Martin was born in August 1960, so he's 60 years old. He has led Fianna Fáil, which is variously translated as Warriors of Ireland or Soldiers of Destiny, <clears throat> since January 2011. He has been a member of the Irish National Assembly or Doyle area since 1989. <clears throat> In the 2020 Irish parliamentary elections, which were held on February the 8th, the three main political parties, Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael, and the left-wing pro-Irish reunification, Sinn Féin, received almost the same number of members in the 158-seat Doyle area. 38 members of Fianna Fáil, 37 members or candidates, of Sinn Féin and 35 members of Fine Gael were elected to uh, the Doyle area. And therefore it took well over four months for the parties to go come into an agreement. <coughs> the three parties in this coalition government are Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael and the Green Party. Since the uh, mainstream Irish political parties are committed 
to having good relations with Britain and have a they have refused to cooperate at the governmental level, at least as far as the national government is concerned with Sinn Féin, which continues officially <clears throat> to demand the reunification of Ireland, or at least its hardcore win does. In those parliamentary elections, <clears throat> the Greens received um, 12 seats. In other words, the coalition government has a total of 85 seats out of 158. In Ireland, the Taoiseach or Prime Minister is officially elected or confirmed by the Parliament's lower house. And the same system is used, for example, in Poland, Germany, Hungary, Israel, Spain, Finland, and possibly Lesotho. Okay, to get back into the events. <clears throat> because traditionally, Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael have seen themselves as rivals. Uh, the irony is that ideologically they don't actually differ that much, even though Fianna Fáil, due to its uh, traditionally close links to the Irish Catholic Church, um, especially in its uh, earlier opposition to abortion, except in cases of life-threatening emergencies, um, contraception, or at least widely available contraception, and then same-sex marriage. It could still be classified as a center-right party, but when the same-sex marriage referendum was held in 2016, which passed with over 70% of the vote, uh, all the mainstream Irish political parties were in favor of the introduction of that, that um, policy. <clears throat> On July the 1st, 2020, Russian voters backed a constitutional amendment. There were, I think, over 200 pieces of amendment, but the most controversial of them enabled the current Russian president, Vladimir Putin, who has been in office from first from 2000 to 2008, and then again since 2012, to seek two further six-year terms when his current term to which he was elected in 2018 ends in 2024. So potentially he can remain in power until 2036. Given the fact that he's turning 69 this year, of course it's possible that he will die or become too uh, sick to govern before 2030 even, or 2036. And he himself expressed concern that he wouldn't like the Soviet, uh, I'm sorry, Russia, uh, to go through what the Soviet Union did in the 1980s when within the space of less than two and a half years, three official Soviet dictators who were deeply sick old men uh, who in the democratic Western countries would have been classified as incompetent to rule because of their severe illnesses. Leonid Brezhnev, uh, Yuri Andropov and Konstantin Chernenko died in quick succession. And then along came Mikhail Gorbachev, who at 20, 54 was relatively young and compared especially to his uh, terminally sick uh, three predecessors was rather healthy. <clears throat> <clears throat> On July the 8th, the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 passed 12 million worldwide. At least 180 bodies were found in mass graves in Djibo, Burkina Faso, Western Africa, where soldiers were fighting jihadists, in other words, hardcore Islamic terrorists. It was suspected that government forces were involved in mass extrajudicial executions. <coughs> 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 Um, 
On August the 9th, a presidential election in Belarus or White Russia in Eastern Europe, which led to incumbent Alexander Lukashenko's re-election, sparked protests throughout the country after major opposition candidate Ms. Sviatlana Tsikhanouskaya rejected the results. Seven days later, the largest political march in Belarusian history took place with an estimated 300,000 in the capital, Minsk, and 200,000 in other Belarusian <coughs> cities and towns. <coughs> On September the 3rd, 2002, Sudanese Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok and Abdelaziz Al-Hilu, the leader of the Sudan People's Liberation Movement North, signed an agreement to transition the country into a secular state where there is no official religion. Even though most <coughs> Sudanese people who have a religion are Muslims. The agreement came three days after the signing of a peace deal between Sudan's transitional government and the Sudan Revolutionary Front, to which the SPLMN <coughs> opted out of. Weeks later, on October the 3rd, the transitional government signed a peace deal with the main rebel groups, including the Sudan People's Liberation Movement North, which had refused to engage in previous talks. On the same day, the skeletons of 200 mammoths uh, who were elephant-like <coughs> large mammals, huge mammals in the prehistoric times, and 30 other animals were unearthed at a construction site for the Mexico City Santa Lucia Airport. It was the largest find of mammoth bones to date, surpassing the mammoth site in the U.S., which had 61 skeletons. <coughs> on October the 10th, Armenia and Azerbaijan in Western Asia agreed on a ceasefire in the ongoing Nagorno-Karabakh or uh, mountainous Karabakh conflict. On October the 15th, the government of Thailand declared a severe state of emergency, banning gatherings of five or more people, initiating a crackdown on demonstrations and imposing media censorship. President of Kyrgyzstan, uh, Soronbay Zhenbekov, resigned from office after weeks of massive protests in the wake of the October 2020 parliamentary election. Opposition leader Sadir Yaparov, uh, or Japarov, assumed office as both the acting president and prime minister of Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan is a former Soviet republic located in Central Asia. On October the 17th, in a resounding vote of confidence in her firm handling so far, or until then, of the COVID-19 pandemic, or her government's handling anyway, uh, Ms. Jacinda Ardern, who has served as the New Zealand prime minister since 2017, and as the New Zealand Labour Party's leader since the same year, was able to win a landslide victory in the parliamentary elections that had been postponed by four weeks because of the pandemic. Over 49% of the votes were cast for her Labour Party, giving the Labour Party 65 seats, while only around 25 to 26% were cast for the main opposition party, the centre-right National Party, which ironically had still won the 2017 parliamentary elections with a plurality, but since surprising that the right-wing populist and nationalist New Zealand First Party had decided to form a coalition government with the Labour Party, Ms. Ardern had been able to become prime minister. Uh, earlier in 2020, the unpopular leader of the National Party had stepped down and an experienced politician, Judith Collins, who had served even uh, in a previous cabinet, at least in one previous cabinet as a National Party a cabinet minister, uh, stepped in despite her vigorous campaign uh, in which she attacked Prime Minister Ardern for broken promises like her promise to clearly or radically reduce the appallingly high child poverty rate in New Zealand, given the fact that the country is classified as a first world Western industrialized country. Uh, she was unable to turn the tide, and indeed uh, the party even lost several percent uh, of vote from the pre-election opinion polls. Only 33 National Party 
members entered the New Zealand Parliament, and several of them even had the electoral system uh, to thank for uh, their seats. Why? Because New Zealand elects about 60% of its members of parliament to the first past the post electoral system where each uh, electoral district is represented by the top, top vote getter, regardless of his or her percentage of the popular vote, while the remaining 40% are proportional seats but in order to qualify for them, a political party has to get over 5% of the proportional vote. Um, later in 2020, New Zealand's Labour Party formed an informal coalition government with the Greens, where they basically agree to disagree, um, and New Zealand's Labour government is therefore, or Labour-led government is therefore, very unlikely to introduce the much criticized wealth tax demanded uh, in their election platform or manifesto by the Greens. On October the 19th, uh, the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 passed the 40 million mark worldwide. <clears throat> On November the 1st, the Moldovan presidential election took place. On November the 3rd, 2020, the U.S. presidential elections took place on the same day. Also, all 435 members of the U.S. House of Representatives, about 34, if I remember correctly, members of the uh, U.S. Senate, and then hundreds of state and local officials were also elected. Um, by November the 7th, 2020, the vote count had proceeded to the level where most major U.S. television and other media networks declared former Vice President Joe Biden, who was the Democratic presidential candidate, as the winner. Uh, the Republican presidential candidate, incumbent President Donald Trump, has refused officially to accept his defeat and is still mounting a useless uh, effort in the U.S. Congress on January the 6th, 2021, to overturn the election results, but because all Democrats and enough Republicans have already acknowledged in the Congress uh, Joe Biden as the winner, that effort will fail. And Joe Biden will, therefore, on January the 20th, 2021, with or without the presence of the outgoing president and vice president and their wives, be inaugurated as the 46th U.S. president, while his running mate, former California U.S. Senator Kamala Harris, will be inaugurated uh, as the new U.S. vice president. On November the 4th, uh, the hurricane, I'm sorry, the United States formally exited the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. On November the 8th, the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 passed the 50 million mark. On November the 9th, <clears throat> the first successful phase 19 vaccine was announced by drug companies Pfizer and BioNTech, which is 90% effective according to interim results. The 2020 uh, Nagorno-Karabakh war uh, informally ended on that day when Armenia and Azerbaijan signed a Russia-brokered ceasefire agreement. Yes, I should note that in um, April, I'm sorry, August, September and October, and then still in uh, November or December, the following Muslim-majority uh, Arab countries agreed to establish diplomatic relations with Israel and to have uh, peaceful relations with it, but none of them have ever been officially at war with Israel. Uh, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, both of which are Western Asian and per Persian Gulf countries, then Sudan, which is an Eastern African country, and Morocco, which is a Northwestern African country. And obviously, uh, Donald Trump is congratulating himself for those deals, even though many other people were involved. And I honestly do not believe that his role was pivotal in at least all of the agreements. He also indicated his desire to get the Nobel Peace Prize, but he did not receive it. 
<clears throat> On November the 15th, 2020, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, was signed by 15 Asia-Pacific countries, meaning Asian and Oceanian countries, to form the world's largest free trade bloc, covering a third of the world's population, having the communist China as the most populous member state. <clears throat> On December the 2nd, Britain approved the Pfizer BioNTech's BNT 162B2. Uh, the uh, second B is a small case B vaccine, becoming the world's first country to do so. On the same day, three activists in Hong Kong were jailed for their roles in the 2019 to 2020 Hong Kong protests with Joshua Wong getting the longest sentence at 13 and a half months. On December the 6th, uh, 2020, the Venezuelan parliamentary or congressional elections took place, boycotted by most opposition parties. <clears throat> On December the 14th, the 538 U.S. presidential electors met in the respective state capitals and in Washington, D.C., and as expected, they confirmed former U.S. Vice President Joe Biden's victory. Not a single one of the electors deviated from his or her pledge. In other words, Joe Biden got 306 electoral votes compared to uh, Donald Trump's 232 electoral votes. The U.S. placed sanctions on Turkey in retaliation for their purchase of uh, an S-400 missile system from Russia, making the first time they have sanctioned an ally of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. On the same day, a total, total solar eclipse was visible from parts of the South Pacific Ocean, Southern South America, and the South Atlantic Ocean. On December the 15th, the International Criminal Court accused the Philippines of crimes against humanity in its war on drugs. On December the 16th, the United States formally designated Switzerland and Vietnam as being currency manipulators. On December the 18th, the number of confirmed human cases of COVID-19 passed 75 million worldwide. On December the 20th, a highly infectious new strain of SARS-CoV-2 spreading in Europe and Australia provoked international border closures. On December the 24th, Britain and the European Union agreed to a comprehensive free trade agreement before the end of the transition period on December the 31st. On December the 27th, number of COVID-19 human cases passed 80 million worldwide. On December the 29th, the 2020 Petrinja earthquake with a magnitude of 6.4 struck Croatia and Southeastern Europe, killing seven and injuring over 20. On December the 31st, the transition period following Britain's exit from the European Union expired and starting today, Britain is therefore treated as a third country. So neither a member state nor a membership applicant, although it still will have close economic ties without membership or without the ability to influence the European Union's decisions with the European Union. And Adobe Flash Player was released for the last time. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to read parts of an analysis of this year written already or published already on December the 11th, 2020, not this year, but the previous year, <clears throat> available on the website of Time magazine. <clears throat> there was no way of knowing at the end of 2019 what the on-rushing train of 2020 would bring. Yes, there were some signs of systemic racism and the death of too many African-American men 
at the hands of white police officers was already scourged. Wildfires in Western United States, hurricanes around the world, and of course, those forest or bushfires in Australia. And an increasingly volatile climate were already a menace or a threat as the earth continued to run a fever. An unconventional president named Donald Trump facing arrest of public and a re-election campaign portended partisan rancor and possible electoral upheaval. <clears throat> and then there was the cluster of cases of a deadly flu-like disease in Wuhan, China, that seemed to Americans at least to be somebody else's problem. What 2020 became was a series of rolling disasters, the killing of George Floyd, the burning of California, an acrimonious political campaign marred by baseless allegations of fraud and illegal voting, and the worst pandemic the world has seen in over a century. But in the midst of the tragedies, there was courage, there was grace, there was sacrifice, there was hope. There were people faced with the very worst rising up to be their very best. Few will recall the year just ending, or now I can say just ended, with anything close to fondness, but it will surely be recalled with no small measure of pride. <clears throat> and then to end this video so that it will not be too long, um, I'm going to read several or quite many verses from the Bible in order to encourage and inspire you dear viewers around the world. And the first one, all of these are taken from the New King James Version or translation of the Bible. The first one is from Proverbs <clears throat> chapter 3, verses 5 to 8. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Then from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. He, meaning God, has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. And finally, from Apostle Paul's epistle or letter to the Philippians, uh, chapter 4, verses 4 to 13. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say a rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, and I would add also sisters. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased or how to be in need. And I know how to abound or to live in abundance or prosperity. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And with these words, dear YouTube viewers from around the world, I wish you a very blessed, righteous, successful, fulfilling, encouraging, inspiring, safe and healthy new year, 2021.